Okay, so now that we've talked about the forward pass, let's talk about the backward pass. Uh, again, like in the previous um, back propagation tutorial videos, we need to take two distinct cases into account. One where we're looking at an output layer, the other where we're looking at one of the hidden layers. Uh, when I have an output layer, uh, what you should do is just think of all the inner workings as just a black box. There's a bunch of junk that happens, uh, and then I get some results. Okay, so I sort of have this super idealized diagram here. Uh, in this scenario, our input vectors are column vectors with four elements. Our target values are column vectors with three elements. Now, for argument's sake, let's suppose we have two different training examples. That is, I have two columns of input data I and two columns of target data T. Um, I'm talking about this because we just talked about it previously uh, for the forward pass. Um, and so I want to talk about, I mean, I'm just going to display it with multiple examples here and you'll see that it works out identically. Um, when we get into the hidden layers, we'll go a single column at a time because it's a little more complicated. Anyway, so suppose it looks like this. I got column vectors with four inputs, so that's these guys. I get column vectors with three outputs, that's these guys. So uh, I here, this italicized I, is the matrix whose column vectors are all of the different inputs. This arrow here means put it to the network. At the other end, we'll get a matrix whose column vectors are all of the outputs. Um, and then we can compare this to our matrix of target values, where here are the red ones correspond to the red ones and the blue ones correspond to the blue ones. So I have, let's say, this first value here. I1 is my one input value. It produces this output, which lives in this column. But I want this output to be close to this target value, red, red, red. Okay. Same thing for the second column, blue, blue, blue. Now, just like before, um, and by before, I mean just like this guy. This is the output from the last page of the last video. Um, when we're looking at the output node, essentially all you got to do is compute the difference between the output and the target, and then multiply by the derivative uh, of the input to the last layer, which is this product here. Okay. So that's exactly what this is. I take script O, which is this whole matrix. I subtract script T, which is this whole matrix. These have the same exact size, so this makes sense. And then I multiply it by the derivative of our transfer function, sigma, uh, evaluated at the input to each one of these vectors. Okay. Now, multiplied by is hand wavy here. The multiplied by is actually element-wise. I actually say that right here. Um, it's not matrix multiplication, it's element by element. So I have the derivative uh, for the first guy right here, and so I multiply that element by that one. And then I have the derivative for the second guy, and I multiply it by that one, etc., etc. Okay? So this star here is element wise multiplication. This matrix of derivatives will have the same size as both output and target. Okay? So this all makes sense. Now, what that lets me do is compute a little delta for the output layer. Okay? Um, sorry, I skipped ahead. Let me go back to this. Remember that first we compute these little deltas, and there's one of these for every node in the network. Um, what we've just done is talked about the output layer. Then I'm going to take this exact expression here, except when we did this one, this is really a fancy way to write the derivative of the transfer function. I'm not going to write it this way. I'm just going to say the derivative of the transfer function. Um, but now, for all the hidden nodes, we're going to go through and compute little delta for each one of those. Once we're done with that, we have to compute the actual weight delta, which we get by looking at the product of the little deltas with the outputs from the previous layer, which you should already know. Um, but right now, we're focusing on the little deltas. So don't get confused between the weight delta, the change in the weights, and this little delta that I'm talking about right now. Okay. So back propagation for the hidden layer. So our goal at this stage is to compute little deltas for a layer based on the deltas for the downstream layer. 
Now, this is that formula for little delta. And again, I'm going to use this layer J, layer K, just so that we have some anchor to talk about them. Uh, but, sorry, I might as well leave it there. Uh, I'm going to compute the deltas for this layer, layer J, based on the deltas that I've already computed for this layer, layer K, which could be an output, it could be another hidden layer, whatever, it doesn't matter. So first thing I'm going to do, well, first let me just say that this, this is the same as what we were just looking at. Um, little delta J here is going to be the product of the derivative at this, sorry, xj is the input to this j node here, or this node on the j layer. Um, so the derivative of that times this sum. And this sum, what it does is it takes all the deltas from the layer downstream and pulls them back by the weights that connect them, adds them all up after taking their product, and then multiplies by the derivative uh, evaluated for this neuron, okay? Now note here that we have, uh, let's see, so I've put these superscripts here, upper J, just so that we can, I can write delta one and know that we're talking about this layer versus over here where I don't have them. I could have put Ks, but it's very busy. Um, notice that this is the opposite of that very first picture where I have many on this side and one neuron on this side in this scenario, I have many on this side and one on this side. So we're looking at the weights that connect one to one times delta one, the weight that connects one to two times delta two, etc. So right now, let's just focus on the sum portion. The sum, obviously, is what I was just saying. It's the product of the uh, delta one here, which is the, the kth layer. Uh, times the weight that connects it to the jth node in the previous layer, etc., etc. So I can just write down this sum as this uh, sum of products. Now to compute delta, what I actually want to do is multiply by the derivative here, which is this guy. But then I'm going to take this expression and vectorize it by turning it into this matrix product. So this is the matrix of weights. But instead, this is a list of weights that connect us from here to here, here to here, here to here, uh, times the column of deltas. So here's our deltas. You pull them back by multiplying by all these weights. Then you multiply by this number right here, which is just a scalar. This is the derivative of the transfer function, right, based on the input to this neuron. Uh, and that's it. Obviously, just like you should expect, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the second node in layer J. Now. I'm just going to go ahead and write it down. It's the derivative of the transfer function evaluated at the input to this second node, which is just a scalar, times the sum of the product of the weights with the output layer deltas, or the other layers deltas. Obviously, this part right here, I want to rewrite as a matrix product. This is instead the weights from 2 to 1, 2 to 2, 2 to 3, times the same column vector of deltas. Now, this should be extremely reminiscent of what we did before, and I'll do the obvious thing. I'm going to take both this delta 1j and delta 2j and make them into an output vector. Here I've just made them a column vector and put a little subscript j to indicate that this is for layer j. Um, ignoring the sigmas for a second, this is the matrix of weights right here in the order that's correct to pull back with multiplied by this column vector of deltas, where these are the deltas from layer k. Um, then once you've done all of this, you'll get a column vector that will, in this case, have two elements. Then you do special multiplication here, the star multiplication, to do it element by element. So then we take the derivative evaluated at the first neuron times whatever ends up being in this product in the first position. Same thing for the second position. This is element wise. Okay. But what matrix is this? Well, you notice here I have 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3 instead of 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, which is what we had at the very beginning. Let's go back to that real quick. Let's go back to just three neurons. So there you can see it. Um, I guess we need the matrix part. So you see here we've got 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, because I'm going from this layer's 
first, second, third, and fourth node all to the same place. In this case, I've got, um, I'm going from the first node to the first node in the following layer, first to second, first to third, right? So I have them in a swapped order. The point is that you should recognize that this swapped order is exactly just the transpose of the matrix, right? If this is a list of weights, if I wanted to take some outputs, or I'm sorry, if I wanted to take this to be an input value and compute the outputs over here, I would multiply by the transpose of this, right, which would then be three by two times some inputs, let's say uh, two by one, and get a three by one vector, okay? The thing that's important to take away from this is that this matrix already exists. It's very easy to compute the transpose, um, and so we basically will get the backwards pass, bringing the deltas forward for free, at least that portion. Um, now, when we have several inputs um, and we have several outputs, we'll have multiple columns of deltas right here. Then this, well, this part will still work as expected. We'll still get a list of deltas. Um, the weight deltas will get a little more complicated. Uh, but we can talk about that later. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to talk about that in the next video. So I'll be right back.